Hi guys, thank you all for tuning in and welcome back to Sewing Clara. Today it's the third video in my short series How to Make Sectioned Shirts. The sewing pattern is available on my homepage and if you missed the first two videos I will link them in the video description and today we're gonna be working on the first long sleeve version. So it's gonna look like this. I went again for orange and camouflage because recently I just can't get enough of this color combo but of course you can use any colors and patterns you like and if you want to know how I made this shirt then please keep watching. We'll be working today again with the sewing pattern for sectioned basic shirts. I will link the sewing pattern down below. I believe at this point I don't have to explain anything about this sewing pattern since we created already two shirts with this one. Today we're gonna be making long sleeves. That means we will take the sewing pattern for the short sleeves and we will align it with the bottom part for the long sleeve along these lines. So basically you discount the seam allowance there, make sure that everything is nicely aligned. And there you go, that's the sewing pattern for long sleeves. We will be edging the neckline with a strip of orange jersey and for that we'll have to make a small adjustment to the sewing pattern. We will have to take away the seam allowance around the neckline just like we did in our previous video. I personally believe that the easiest way is to print out the two pieces again and then you can simply cut away the seam allowance on that version of your sewing pattern and then you have it ready for whenever you decide to use the sewing pattern and make uh, this type of edging like we're gonna do today. Let's have a look at the pieces for our long sleeve shirt. So let's start over here. We have here the parts for the top section. So that's the front part folded in the middle and the back part folded in the middle. Then we have here the front bottom part and the back bottom part both folded in the middle. Here we have the sleeves and this strip of orange jersey will serve me as edging for the neckline. These two pieces are the exact copies of these two and they are optional. I'm going to use them in order to make the top sections thicker. That's something I really like because I'm not wearing a bra since I'm very flat chested. You don't need to do that, uh, but I find it nice. Another option would be to use these two pieces as a kind of an integrated bra. You would sew them in and you would add an elastic band on the bottom and it would give you a little bit of support. But again, that's optional. These are the main parts for the top section that you need in any case. As a first step, I'll be pinning the top parts together. So I will grab the top front part of the camouflage fabric and I'll put the back part on it like so. I will align the sides and the shoulders and I'll pin everything at an angle. And of course I did the same with the lining. Now we will pin together the bottom sections. So I will make sure that the right side is facing now upwards. That's the back part. I will place the front part over it and I will be pinning these pieces at an angle and even though it is quite distinctive on the bottom because the bottom is a little bit longer I like making a little cut in the center of the front part because then it's really easy to tell which one is which without having to examine the bottom. And now that the bottom section is pinned together, we can work on the sleeves. How you proceed with the sleeves is up to you. You can sew together first the sides and then fold the bottom inwards and sew around the edges. Some people like folding the bottom inwards first and then sewing it together and then they simply fold the seam to one side and sew through. I personally prefer first sewing the sides together, but however you do it is entirely up to you. It's all about personal preference, as I always say. So I will align the sides of the sleeves and three guesses what? I'm gonna pin them in place at an angle. So 
So now the sleeves are pinned together. I recommend sewing one sleeve on the side together and pulling it over one of your arms in order to see if they fit nicely or whether you will have to take them in somewhere. I know that I'm gonna be taking them in about from here towards here because I have rather skinny arms, but the way I designed the pattern is so that they fit comfortably to many body types, to people who have muscles or rather stronger arms on the top. It's always easier to take stuff in. And now that the sleeves are pinned together, the bottom section and also both top sections, we can go to the sewing machine. I will be sewing everything together with stretchy overlock stitch. Because these are different, different colors, I will be sewing these two parts with a light beige yarn, or you could call it off-white, and for the rest I'll be using orange yarn. Here it looks like when I took the sleeve in a little bit, so now I will go ahead and I will cut back the excess fabric here. I cut back the excess fabric also on the sides of the bottom sections. And now it's time to put the top sections and the bottom sections together. So I will grab the front top part and I will fold it I will fold it so that the side seams are aligned and I'll make here a little cut in the center because that's gonna help me to align it with the center of the front on the bottom section and I'll do the same with the lining. By the way, I did not cut back the excess fabric here because it just doesn't bother me here on these two pieces. All right, and now I will turn this piece, which is the bottom section to the right side, and I will make sure that the front is facing towards me or like upwards. And now I will grab this part and I will pull it over this piece. If you are going to use the lining as integrated bra, you have to sew only these two pieces together and you will need an elastic band and sew it here on the bottom so that this would give you support. But since I'm not gonna do that, I do something different. So I will turn it to the right side and I will place it inside of the bottom and I will make sure that the right side of the lining is facing the wrong side of the bottom sections. So I'll align everything here where I have the little cut because that's the very center of the front. And I will put a pin in from the inside. That's how I like working. And now I will align the sides. So since I have here three layers of fabric and all three pieces have a side seam. I have to make sure that I kind of divide everything. So I'll fold the seam uh, of the bottom towards the back part, the seam of the top towards the front part, and this one will be aligned again towards the top. So and I'll put uh, towards the back. That's what I wanted to say. And I'll put a pin in here and then I'll align here nicely all edges and pin everything in place and I'll do the same around the entire edge. And here's what it looks like once everything is pinned in place. I could use this yarn uh, because it would match this jersey and it looks also good with the back of the camo. But since this is gonna be inside and uh, at the end of this project, I won't see what yarn I've been using. I'll just use whatever I have in my sewing machine, which is right now orange. And I will sew these pieces together with stretchy overlock stitch. And here's what it looks like once I have sewn everything in place. I will go ahead and cut back the excess fabric and uh, a little tip for anyone who is a beginner in order to be sewing in the same distance from the edge you can use one of the edges of 
your sewing foot. So I aligned the right edge of the sewing foot with the edge of the fabric and that way I've been sewing equally far. Of course, if you're working with just one layer for the top section, you would not be aligning the lining with everything, but you would be sewing the pieces together exactly the same way. So now I'm gonna pull this section up and I'm also gonna pull the lining up. So this is what it looks like from the right side and here is what it looks like on the inside. So the seam that we just made, this one is nicely hidden and it looks really pretty from the inside. So now I will align the edges nicely and as a next step I will be pinning in the sleeves. Important is to make sure that here the seam allowance is folded to different directions on each part so that we wouldn't have too much fabric overlapping. So I'm just gonna pin these in place uh, so that the shoulders would be nicely aligned. And I will also put in a few pins around the neckline to hold it in place. That's gonna make things easier. Before we pin in the sleeves, let's talk shortly about the possibilities for the neckline. So the easiest way how to hem the neckline would be to fold it inwards and put a pin in like so at an angle. And then you could sew around the neckline with stretchy zigzag or with stretchy straight stitch. Now I'm not gonna do that. I even cut back the seam allowance of the neckline because I'm gonna be using this strip of fabric. I just like the way it looks, this contrast color, because it will go nicely with the rest of the shirt. So I will start pinning here. I'll put a, a pin here and I will be aligning it with the edge of the neckline. And uh, here where the neckline is rounded, I'll be slightly pulling on the strip, but really ever so slightly so that it will make the edge a little bit firmer. So here I came to the end. I will remove here a few pins and I will open the strip and I will align the ends right side to right side and I will pin them in place. And first I will sew these ends together with straight stitch and then I'm gonna fold it again and pin back in place. This is a way I personally prefer. I find that it looks a little bit neater. And here's what the neckline looks like, but once I have sewn through with stretchy overlock stitch, it will stretch out a little bit so it won't be that ruffled. And I'm gonna leave it like that for the time being and I will start pinning in the sleeves. So I will turn this to the wrong side and I will turn the sleeves to the right side. And here's what it looks like when the sleeve is pinned in place. I will pin in the second sleeve and then I'll go to my sewing machine and I will sew around all edges with stretchy overlock stitch. And I'll be using on the top the orange yarn and on the bottom the beige yarn because it's gonna look nicer. Here is what our shirt looks like so far. So here we have the seam around the neckline and here is the seam on the sleeves. So I will go ahead and cut back the excess fabric on the seam where the sleeves have been sewn in. And now the neckline, I will go ahead and cut it just a little bit back so that the edge is cleaner, but not too much. I will need the length because I'll be sewing it in place once I folded it inwards. So this is just to clean the edges. And now that the edges are clean, I'm gonna be folding this inwards like so, and I will be pinning it at 
an angle. And when I'll be done, I will go to my cover lock machine and I'll be sewing around the edge with cover lock stitch. But if you have just a regular household sewing machine, like the one we've been working on so far, you can go ahead and sew around this edge with straight stretchy stitch. Or you could use either a regular zigzag or stretchy zigzag. And I personally will be sewing with neon orange yarn in order to complete this color scheme because I like the contrast. But if you are using any fabric that has a printed pattern, you can just see whatever color of yarn looks good to you. The way I'll add the bottom of the sleeves and also the bottom of the shirt is very easy. I'll simply fold the fabric inwards and I'll put in a few pins at an angle. The sleeves are very narrow on the bottom so when I'll be sewing this in place I will turn the sleeve from uh, to the wrong side because it's easier to place it like so underneath the sewing foot and sew from the inside than this way. And I'll be using also my cover lock for this and also for the bottom of the shirt. And actually when it comes to the sleeves, I find it easier to fold the bottom like so when it's already turned to the wrong side because you fold it and then you straighten it and then it's pretty much the same length. You just have to measure it in several places to make sure that everything matches and then you'll add in a few pins and it just goes so much faster than folding it inwards. Or at least for me personally. Maybe you have a different opinion, but that's just what works for me the best. And as always, before I start putting pins in the second sleeve, I will measure whether I have folded it the same amount. And that way I will make sure that both sleeves will be equal. And when it comes to the bottom, I like folding the part so that the seams, the side seams are aligned. And then I like cleaning up this edge a little bit so that the line is nicer. And then I'll be folding it inwards. Here is what the back bottom looks like once it has been pinned in place and here's the front. You'll notice that the back is a little bit more rounded and it's a little bit long, longer in the center. That's intentionally because the shirt fits just so much nicer than when the line is exactly the same on the bottom. So for the bottom you can use either a straight stitch or stretchy zigzag which is maybe even better. I'll use cover stitch. I'll use the cover stitch also around the bottom of the sleeves and around the neckline. But you can work just with the stretchy zigzag for all these edges. And now the top is finished. So here is what the neckline looks like, the sleeves, and here we have the bottom edge. And one final step, I will now go ahead and iron our finished shirt. And here's what the piece looks like once it has been ironed. And now I'm going to model the shirt for you. All right, so that's how I made this shirt. I had a lot of fun with this project and I can't wait to share with you the last one in this series. So stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. As I already mentioned, the sewing pattern is available on my homepage. I hope that you guys enjoyed today's tutorial. Thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate you very much. God bless you and see you soon. Bye.